What is going on guys, this is your boy Astrum Sensei and welcome back to Let's Create an Action Role Playing Game using Unreal Engine 4. So in today's video we are going to be finishing the lock-on system and it's going to be a very short update but I planned the next one and it's coming very soon so don't you worry about that. So yeah, in today's video we are going to be finishing the last thing we need for the lock-on system which is one glitch that we have uh, avoided the last time and we didn't fix so we're gonna fix it today and I figured out how to fix it easily and once we do that we are also gonna like check out all of the lock-on code and there is an adjustment that I want to make and I want to tell you about because it's very important and it affects the way the game plays so yeah we are gonna check that out this is the last time we are gonna work on the lock-on system for this game and you know we might like make small adjustments later but for now you know this is the last lock-on video Video. but yeah we are only gonna fix like a small issue at the beginning and then the rest of the video is filler so I'm gonna tell you what part is filler but you know I really recommend checking out the video and you know watching it and reviewing the code it's been a while since we've last um, coded this so we have to like figure out again how we did things also after this video I'm gonna update the project files on patreon so if you are a patron go check out the patreon project files I'm probably gonna stick to one link from now on you know I figured out how to do stuff and yeah I'm gonna stick to one link and I'll update it after every major video I'm gonna update it after this one because the lock-on system is now perfect after this also before we start please make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you are new to the channel and don't forget the notification bell that's just gonna make life easier for, for all of us and yeah let us begin by going into the game and checking out the glitch that I talked about so if you press play and try out the game what you will notice is that when you lock on and kill the enemies, so if you kill this enemy, the game will automatically lock on to the next enemy. Oh wait, it didn't? What's wrong with that? I think it has to do with the radius of the lock on. So we're gonna have to change that as well. For example, if we bring the enemies closer to each other, you can see that when you kill the first enemy, it's gonna lock on to the next one. So we're gonna have to fix it so that, you know, the enemies don't have to be too close for it to work. Yeah, let's try it out here. When you kill him, or when you kill her, it will lock onto the next one. And when you kill the next one, the problem is you will stay locked onto them, e even if you don't lock onto the enemy, to the next enemy. So what we want to do is we actually want to make it so that when you kill the last enemy in the lock on radius, it will stop being locked on and you know the enemies will just you know things will go back to normal without lock on so that's what we need to do and I found a very simple fix for that and we do it in the event tick so yeah I know event ticks are you know a touchy subject for some people I don't find them an issue uh, because um, I just don't see what the problem is with using them like you can fix stuff later of course but I feel like they are an efficient way to, you know, keep stuff in line. And what we need to do is basically we have a sequence. So we do all of this stuff at the same time and add the third one, or you can ju just add the pin at the third one. We are going to make a branch. So we're going to ask it, are we locked on? So we're going to get the condition for lockdown. I think it's in the combat conditions yeah it is so just locked on and what we are gonna do now is we are gonna see if we are locked on and if it is true then we are gonna ask if something is valid so is valid and what we want to check is the nearest enemy so if there is a nearest enemy then it is valid and if there isn't then it is not valid so we're gonna get the nearest enemy and put it as the input object and then if it is valid, we actually don't want to do anything. And if it's not valid, then we are going to turn off the lock on. So just type in lock on and it should call our interface. And the lock on to should also be the nearest enemy so that, um, you know, so that it doesn't lock on or lock off. Like, so it knows who to lock off. And if you hit compile, that should actually fix it. So we have this first enemy and we kill her. Then we lock onto the next enemy. 
and we kill her and now we are no longer locked on and we don't automatically lock on to the next enemy and that is because this one is not in the radius for the um, next enemy or you know yeah the next enemy when the first one dies so we are actually gonna fix that radius and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place an editable uh, variable for that so that we can edit it on the fly from the character BP base self here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the combat graph and we have two places to fix this first place is the target switching so this is when you want to switch targets you want to see over here you have this radius for the sphere trace so this is where it tries to detect the enemies with the sphere trace and what we want to do is we actually want to promote the radius to a variable and we are gonna call this lock on range I don't think we have something like this yet so I'm just gonna call it lock on range and we are gonna compile and instead of 300 for now I'm gonna make it a thousand you can make it whatever um, number you want I'm gonna do thousand for now just for testing and I'm definitely not gonna tell you the next time I change this you know you can just put it however you want and it does affect the gameplay a lot and you might think there are glitches when this is too low so yeah just keep this in mind the next area is actually in the function which is get nearest enemy this one is for the um, not for the switching but for when the enemy dies or when the first time you want to lock on to the to an enemy so what we're gonna do is we are gonna just gonna bring the variable over here and put it in the radius and that should make it 1000 and then we are gonna compile and the lock on range is now 1000 so yeah just we're just gonna go to the variable and we are also gonna change the category to combat preferences I think this is where I put all of the editable stuff yeah it is and this array I actually made it accidentally I don't think it's part of the code yeah it isn't what else do we have oh yeah we have this part over here which is the part where we check if we are locked on if we are then we check if the nearest enemy is still valid and then if it is not then we lock off this is for when the nearest enemy dies and there is no other nearest enemy so for this I'm actually gonna collapse it into a node and I'm gonna call it lock on enemy uh, actually I don't know what to call it yeah I'm just gonna go with lock on then check for enemies and I'm gonna add a separate comment to explain properly what this is for so I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna type in checks if there is another enemy to lock onto and I think this is more explained like this now I would have placed it with these two but when I place it after this it no longer works actually I might have to place it before it but I don't think it's worth worth the hassle so I'm just gonna place it on the second slot in the sequence and you know what I can do is I can actually place a reroute node over here and it will look organized like this and this stamina system will be third or then two and that's perfect I think now for this I'm gonna comment on all of those and I'm gonna call them lock on and yeah everything's great now so we're just gonna move them all and yeah I don't think there's too much to it for this video now what we are gonna do is we are gonna try the new radius and check it out and then we are gonna end the video I know it's very simple and you guys are not used to seeing me in the tutorials I thought that this is like a chill video so I decided that I'm gonna turn on the camera and you know just chill with you guys while making this game but oh the lock on no longer works why is that happening what the hell what did I mess with okay so for some reason it's this variable that is causing the problem and disabling the lock on so I don't know what the problem with it is it's supposed to work exactly the same as this but it is not actually working I don't know what the issue is 
but I don't think we need it, honestly. Where is the movement? Oh, combat preferences. We have lock off distance and lock on range. I'm not sure what the issue is with this one, but we're not gonna keep it, so I'm just gonna delete it and make the radius just 1000 and I'm gonna go back to the target switching and also do the same. So make sure you make the radius 1000 after you delete it. Actually for the target switching, I'm gonna make it 600 instead of 1000 and when we press play, I think it should work a little bit better. Yeah, it works better. Now there is a problem when I lock off, it's not turning off the reticle from the first one. Not always, it works I guess now, I don't see a, a, any problems with it. Yeah it works perfectly, but sometimes the lock off just doesn't remove this reticle or target thingy. Yeah it's working, let's try again and see if the glitch comes back. We locked onto this one, then this one, and no, I, th I don't think there's a, any problem with it. It's working perfectly. Okay. All right, guys. So that was it for this video. I know it's a very basic update, but I wanted to like give you guys an update and. I also will be doing the next video very soon. I'm gonna try to make the next video be the one where we change the character model and replace her. And I'm gonna have to do a lot of hard work because we are not using the Unreal Skeleton. If we were using Unreal Animations, it would be really easy. But anyway, that's the case. And I'm preparing for the next video. It's not gonna take too long, hopefully. If you guys wanna see it faster, please make sure to leave a like because you know, that would really make my life easier and motivate me to make more. And subscribe if you are new to the channel because you know who doesn't want to make an RPG just subscribe and follow this tutorial series it's awesome ask everyone who, who, who followed it they learned a lot and yeah I will see you next time take care have a great day and bye